Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Plant Fanatics. Today we're going to be going over five rare cold hardy fruit trees, so stay tuned. The first tree on our list is the largest fruit native to North America. It is the pawpaw or Asamina triloba. This is not to be confused with Carica papaya or the tropical papaya. The confusion in the names being crossed comes from early explorers calling a pawpaw a papaya based upon the fact that it kind of looks like a papaya. However, that's where the similarities cease, the trees look nothing alike, and the fruit certainly tastes nothing alike. The pawpaw has a very rich history. The Native Americans cultivated and ate the fruit, and when early explorers got to the Americas, they were introduced to the fruit by the Native Americans, and most of the explorers found the fruit very palatable. George Washington's favorite dessert was actually a chilled pawpaw, and Thomas Jefferson loved the tree so much that he grew him at his estate, Monticello. The tree typically grows between 12 and 20 feet tall, and it's cold hardy to about negative 25 degrees, so it's a very cold hardy tree. It's great for growing in colder climates. It's not self-fertile, so you're going to need at least two trees, and three trees is actually recommended in order to get pollination. The fruit is custard-like. It kind of tastes like a cross between a banana and a mango. However, it really just tastes like a pawpaw. It's its own thing. There's nothing quite like it. The tree is not commercially grown due to the fact that the fruit does not keep well and it bruises very easily. So if you do find this, it's usually going to be at a local farmer's market or a natural grocery store that locally source them. This is a very easy tree to grow in your yard. It's very adaptable. The trees like a little bit of shade when they're younger, but as they get older, they can take that full sun, and in fact, they will fruit better in the full sun. So I highly recommend growing this tree in your edible landscape. The second tree on our list is native to Korea, China, Japan, and Taiwan. It is the Korean dogwood. This is a wonderfully ornamental tree. It has beautiful flowers followed by a pink to red berry. It's creamy and sweet, similar in taste to a ripe persimmon. However, it really just tastes like its own thing. That's just the best way I could describe it to you guys. The rind of the berry is edible, but typically people don't eat it because it's bitter. And this is more upright in growth than your typical dogwood. And it has extreme ornamental value. It gets to about 15 to 30 feet tall. So keep that in mind whenever you're planting it. But this is a must have for a beautiful landscape that still gives you food to eat. I highly recommend this one to you guys. The third tree on our list is native to China, and it's been cultivated there for thousands of years. It is the jujube. There are many different varieties of jujube, and they all taste amazing. I specifically grow jujube Lee on this property. I know people that grow other varieties, and they all taste great. The tree typically grows between 15 and 30 feet tall over time. It's extremely adaptable to different types of soils, and it's very cold hardy, so it's highly recommended as a backyard hobbyist tree. It's also known as the Chinese date because the fruit can be left on the tree to dry and it actually gets sweeter this way. It's very similar to a date and it can be eaten fresh as well. It has a crunch to it like an apple and still very sweet and it's growing in popularity in the hobbyist world. However, it's not common by any means. So if you don't have this tree, I highly recommend getting one. The fourth fruit tree on my list is actually one of my personal favorites and its native ranges are from Turkey all the way to Northern India and it's the fig, or Ficus carica. This is one of the earliest fruit trees to be cultivated. It's mentioned in the Bible many times, and it's adaptable to a wide range of soils as long as it's a well-draining soil. The reason that the fig is in my rare cold hardy fruit tree list is because even though it's readily available in a warmer climate, it is pretty rare still to see them growing in a northern cold planting zone. Not so sure why that is. I think it's just because people aren't really aware of the fact that there's many varieties of figs that do wonderful in northern planting zones. And even though you're not going to get that breba crop that a lot of people get in the warmer climates, you can still get that huge main crop of figs if you choose the right varieties. In planting zones 5 through 7, figs will die back to the ground and then every year they'll grow to around 10 to 12 feet tall and give you a nice crop of figs somewhere in the vicinity of August and September. And there's still tons of varieties that are coming out of the woodworks because you guys have to realize that many immigrants when coming to America from Europe, they took their kids, their clothes, and they took a cutting of their family's fig trees. So there's still a lot of figs coming out of people's backyards that belong to their family for a long period of time, and they do great in colder climates. So the number of fig varieties 
that you can grow in colder planting zones is getting bigger all the time. I could go on about figs for an infinite amount of time. So with that being said, I highly recommend this tree if you're not growing one already. The fifth tree on my list is a tree that's native to Europe and Asia, and it is the Cornelian Cherry Dogwood. Being from the dogwood family, this tree has a great ornamental value, as well as having these beautiful bright red berries that if eaten too soon can be astringent, but if you allow them come to full ripeness, tastes like a tart cherry and a cranberry mixed together. Yet again, the fruit has its own flavor. It is its own thing, but that's just the best way I can describe it to you guys. The trees typically grow between 20 and 25 feet tall, and they are not self fruitful, so you're gonna need at least two varieties in order to get fruit set on these things. However, it is well worth the space. They're gonna give you an abundant crop, and the flavor is outstanding, so I highly suggest planting this one as well. It's another great tree for the hobbyist grower. Thanks for watching the video, guys. If you liked the format, let me know, and I'll make more like this. Leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and share with any of your friends who would think this is interesting, and thanks for watching.